Samantha Miller and Eric Hutchinson were in love. And on April 28th, they publicly proclaimed their love for one another at their wedding in Folly Beach, South Carolina. It was a beautiful ceremony and a wonderful reception afterwards. Two young newlyweds surrounded by the most important people in their lives. Eric remembers hearing Samantha telling him, I don't want this night to ever end. But the reception did end, and in a very dramatic moment, the bride and groom were whisked away in a golf cart. But moments later, everything changed drastically. That golf cart was struck by a car reportedly going more than twice the speed limit. Samantha was killed, and Eric ended up in a coma and miraculously survived. The woman behind the wheel of that car was accused of driving under the influence. Her name is Jamie Kamarowski. And tonight, we will hear her jailhouse conversations with her father and boyfriend as we investigate the tragic death of Samantha Miller. Hi, I'm Benny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And this hour, we're looking at the lives of two young women. And the contrast could not be greater. It just couldn't. Um, we begin with Samantha Miller. She was a beautiful bride. It was a great, great day, an unbelievable night. It's like the, the top of your life. You know, you're, you're getting ready, starting your life with, with uh, the man you love, beginning to build whatever they were gonna build together. And everything was just beautiful and wonderful and, and full of, of joy and, and love and, and you know, thinking about the whole world and what's next and happiness. Right? That's, that, that, was, that was that night and really the life of Samantha Miller, right? Up, up, up until that point. Like I said, the contrast couldn't be greater. Then there's, there's, there's Jamie Kamarowski. She's an alleged drunk, like on a bender, breaking laws, being completely reckless. Those are the allegations. Driving twice the speed limit, way over the legal limit, according to prosecutors in this case. There's nothing pretty about that. There was nothing great going on that night for her. There was nothing special about what she was doing. But you go to the contrast. She's alive and Samantha isn't. The contrast is, is even greater when you think about this um, for Eric and, and, and Samantha. Eric will never be able to see Samantha alive again. He'll never be able to, to share a moment. He's got memories. I'm sure he's got, I don't know how much of a memory he has of that night or of the, of, of the crash because of what he went through, but he'll remember her, but he, he'll never be able to spend time with her, never be able to talk to her, never be able to talk face to face, hear her voice, share stories. That's gone. That's gone. So let's talk about the contrast. Because for Jamie and, and her, not her husband, but her boyfriend, right? Doing video calls from jail. You're gonna see him tonight on the show. But the, her life continues. Her relationship can continue. And she can, you know, can go on to the next day. Yeah, I understand she's in jail. She didn't get bond. Well, Probably pretty appropriate under the circumstances. But the contrast couldn't be greater. She gets to wake up in the morning, go to sleep at night, think about the future, talk to her loved ones. Samantha doesn't. I want to bring in a special guest uh, joining us tonight to give us a little more insight because as we do in all these cases, you have to understand that, yeah, there's going to be someone on trial uh, there's going to be someone we'll hear a lot about her, but let's, let's learn a little bit more about Samantha. Uh, Samantha's uh, sister, Mandy Jenkins, joining us tonight. Mandy, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. I know 
So many people have asked you and the rest of your family to speak, and it's exhausting, it's difficult, it's tough. Um, but I, I appreciate it because you can give us a perspective that I can't and, and, a, and a soundbite can't. So uh, I'm glad you're here tonight. Um, I want to start with just one word. If you had to put one word to describe your sister, and you can take a moment here to think, what would that word be? I think that word would be light. Explain. Sammy was the light of everyone's life. No matter if she knew you for a minute or if she didn't know you at all, or if she knew you for a lifetime, she was the light of your life. What was, what was it like? Um, my, and I'm just guessing here out of the blue, but I, I have a feeling she was really excited and the entire family was extremely excited about this wedding and there was planning and parties and celebrations even before that night. Um, give us a, a, an idea of, what that, of how important this was for her and for your family. I mean, as you mentioned earlier, a wedding is everyone's favorite time of their life, right? Like you're finally vowing to the person that you love. And Eric was her person and is her person. Um, and when she told me that they got engaged, it was the most beautiful moment. And I just knew that he was the one. So the wedding was amazing. I mean, beautiful it couldn't have gone more perfect i'm looking at the pictures and beach weddings right beach weddings can always be a little iffy you know is the surf going to be up what's the weather going to be like we're outside but it looks like um everything worked out perfectly yeah there was a little hiccup so we had um our rehearsal like wedding rehearsal the day prior and the wind was blowing a different direction. Um, so when we did plan on the bride's family is going to be on this side and the groom's family is going to be on this side, Sammy was very insistent on which side she was going to stand on based on the direction of the wind because uh. she wanted her hair not in her face. Um, and so when we got to the wedding, we had to swap sides. I was like, we didn't practice this. <laughs> and my girls were the flower girls, and I'm like, I know I told you to go to this side, but now you have to go to this side. So it was funny, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> how's, how's everybody holding up? I know every day is difficult. Um, when, when you think of her, what do you, what, what's the image that comes to your mind? Uh, I really stick to everything that we know of Sam and how amazing she is and was. I mean, I hate saying was, even though I understand that she's not here anymore, but everything that she is, because she's changing people to this day, um, making moves on people that may have not like connected with our family or her or anything and just she, is leading people in a direction that they need to go because of this. So I'm happy for it. Um, how we are healing, we are so much better in a sense of, I, and this may be me speaking out of turn, but I uprooted my family from, we were living in Florida and moved back to North Carolina right after it happened. I left, um, Florida to come to the wedding and never went back to Florida with my daughters and my husband. And we are since like very close to my, my mom and my brother and everyone. And it's very grateful like to have us each and, and, very close. And that's, that, I mean, that's her, like right? making sure everyone's together. That's Sam. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. hundred percent. I want to take a moment and you can pass on the question if you want and and I'm, I'm fine with that but 
Tonight, we're going to show some of these uh, jailhouse calls uh, by the woman who's accused of, of driving drunk and, and causing all yeah. of this. Did you watch them? Did you have any reaction to them? Have you avoided them? What are your, what are your thoughts there? I think as a family, we've almost avoided them, but not in a like sense of, I don't want to see them. It's just, how is that going to change anything? It's not going to bring Sammy back. Um, obviously, they're being released. Um, it's hurtful to hear what is being said or not being said, um, if, if that is a thing. But again, I, I mentioned in another call, like, Sam is who she is, and the driver is who she is. And I'll leave it at that. Understood. I'm looking over your left shoulder, and there's a sign on the, on the wall there. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with that sign? I, that, I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of little things there seem very appropriate. And, and, and is that, who, who got that? Is that, is, is that someone from your family bought that? So we moved here with like not a lot. And I went to a lot of Goodwills and Sammy was with me multiple times. Um, that sign was one of them. And if I could tell you a quick story. Sure. I know I don't have much time, but um, I put my girls, I have two daughters, Sammy's nieces, they're Auntie Sammy, and they loved and adored, um, into a summer camp. My girls have never gone anywhere. They have been with me. I have planned on homeschooling. I've kept them with me. This has all kind of changed everything. Long story short, I went out one day and at like a home goods, Marshalls type deal was a sign of love you more. And this sign behind me, which Sammy's saying is love you more. And it was like right there next to each other. And then I also saw a sign that said heaven is a little closer at the beach. Sammy died at the beach. And it was just like, Sammy was here. And at the same time, the preschool or the school where my girls were at called me and gave me a scholarship for the girls to continue camp for the rest of the summer. And it was like, Sammy did that. <laughs> Absolutely. And Mandy, um, um, thank you so much for sharing all that. And I think we have a much better understanding of Sammy and, and, and your family. And please give our best to everyone there. Absolutely. Thank you.